Yep. Hello everyone. It is Gavin here from Hollow Ground Productions. Would you subscribe, subscribe? And today we're going to be focusing on the ethereal, intense soundscapes of Daniel Avery. Now I would say that I didn't know an awful lot about Daniel Avery before doing a personal tutorial on him, but I decided to take a closer look at him because he's actually quite an interesting guy. A lot of people talk about wanting their music to be real. I kind of want it to feel unreal and to feel like it comes from somewhere else and it can take you somewhere else as well. To feel unreal, 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 unreal. So taking that on board, I'm going to try to recreate sounds from four of his tracks, including Haze and Gold, which I would need to distort and erode some bell chimes and use an 808 core kit run through a reverb. I'm also going to recreate the sounds of Lone Swordsman, again running an 808 kit through a reverb and using an analog saw wave in mono with Glide. I'm also going to recreate the piano line from New Faith, which is a simple two-part piano motif which is pitched down, thrown to a lot of reverb and heavy compression. And then finally the lead from Ultra Truth using both bass and lead and running through space echo. And let's start with... For the bell chimes, I'm going to use the default preset of Collision and I'll draw in the MIDI as accurately as I can. Now I know that doesn't sound real, but we're going to make it sound even more unreal through a careful selection of audio effects, starting with glue and redux, which will give it a graininess, pedal, which is going to give it a bit of crunch, echo with the dry wet turned up slightly, and a hybrid reverb accentuating the frequencies at around 6000 and then using the EQ to push down any frequency buildups. I'm going to duplicate the line for the lower notes and the audio settings are largely the same. Let's freeze that to audio and then add some more effects. Namely, a little bit of 3-4 delay, a bit more bit reduction using Redux, EQing off some of the highs and running it through an even stronger reverb. Yep, that sound is taking me somewhere else. Use Ableton's stock 808 core kit, draw in some maraca hits, some sandy hi-hats, some toms, snares and kicks in a following breakbeat pattern. Now to make these sound a bit thicker and warmer, I'm going to put a bit of glue compression, only getting about minus 2 dB. One of them is slow, one of them is fast. The EQ boosting the area around 1000, the multiband dynamics, which is gluing everything together, saturation, which is thickening it, and a bit of chorus, and then running it through ambience medium reverb. Rolling off the super highs, and then more audio effects, including even more glue, even more reverb, but only slightly, and then again rolling off the highs, so it makes it sound extra warm. Super floaty and transported. Now the bass, two lines, one, a sine sub, with the glide turned on and a single voice, and a second line with two sine waves FMing each other with chorus, and then rolling off the subs, and together they sound very warm. Using the analog sine wave, again with the glide turned on and the highs rolled off, there aren't many highs anyway, glue it down, add more reverb and you get that lovely spatial lead. Again, use EQAs to put down any resonant buildups. A lot of people think that this track, Hazel and Gold, is quite magical and it's because he's not afraid to use major chords. Let me take a step back, this is Wavetable Sawtooth with the highs rolled off and shimmer with six voices and nearly 60% width and then clipped disc analog glued down and then a really long reverb. For the second lead I'm going to make a lead out of someone's voice. Isolate and loop one section and I can play this up high or I can bring it down an octave. Boost the mids and the EQ8, run it through clipped analog reverb, more glue heavy reverb and also heavy chorus ensemble, which makes it sound quite retro. EQ pushing down the highs. And this is what they all sound like together. OK, 
Okay, look, let's move on to the next track. No, I'm sorry, man. So like with Hazel and Gold, we're going to use the 808 core kit, draw out some kicks, toms with some reverb and maraca hits, except we're at 120 BPM. And we need an additional clap, which I put in a different line for no reason other than why not. And we need to distort the drums to make them more unreal. So let's put some shifter flander with coarse down and dry wet at 27%. We're gonna put some chorus bass at about 35%. A snare hybrid reverb. Utility, putting everything in mono in the bass. Gentle glue compression. Uh, ambient medium reverb. And use EQ8 to boost the lows. For the glide lead, we're gonna use analog sawtooth using these notes. Filter out the highs and turn on the glide. Then add some saturation to thicken sound, redux to degrade the sound, erosion to degrade it even more, droney cave hybrid reverb, and then more glue, and you more or less got it. Now for the bass, again, two lines. One of them is the sub, which is in mono, and another line in parallel, which is the square wave. Highs rolled off, a bit of attack, a bit of delay. In poly, with noise unison at about 25% through echo flex hybrid reverb. And then together. If you want to learn how to make music that will move people and figure out how that works, if you are looking to develop artistically and searching for your voice, but don't know how to find it, you need to get onto me at this email address for a one-on-one -on -one tuition or personal tutorial. Okay, on to the next track. I'm just gonna use the grand piano preset, which comes free with Ableton, and drawing in the simple notes. La, 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 la. Bounce that to audio, and then we're gonna take that audio and put it into a simpler, put it down one semitone. Then we're gonna create an audio chain with a wet signal and a semi-dry signal. The semi-dry signal has a little bit of delay, a little bit of echo. Oh, well a lot actually, just the dry wet to 100% and the feedback a little bit low. So it immediately sounds like it's playing in a room. And saturate it, and then compress it even more intensely, and then glue it even more intensely. This is just gonna beef it and make it sound more anxious. And then the wet signal has Valhalla super massive at a really, really high setting. And as this plays out, we slowly turn up the wet signal. When I first heard this track, looking at this image, it really made me sad and creeped me out. Wow, I feel like I'm looking into a black hole. You know that Daniel Avery is a seriously deep feeling guy for making a track like this four minutes long at the beginning of his album. Okay, last track. I'm gonna create the bass instrument and the lead instrument from the same single tape saw note. Here are the four bass notes. And here are the notes for the lead. This is just the unprocessed single sample hitting every time rolling the filter down and automating turning up and down the filter and now I'll group both the bass and the lead together and I put on echo with a lot of feedback and 50% dry wet and that does most of it but we need to thicken the sound and make it sound like it's heavily compressed so saturate it and then you put on more compression because when you compress the reverb it makes the sound sound really deep and trippy and like you're looking into a black hole and you're falling deeper and deeper into darkness. Far too much emphasis is placed on immediacy these days. There's something way beyond that that will never die. Now I do realise I spent a lot of this video recreating the sounds of another artist, but it's not just about recreating sounds, it's about getting into the mindset of another artist and think, how can I make music using the same mindset? He likes his music to sound unreal so it can take him to another place, and he believes that there's something beyond the immediate which is eternal. 
So, as usual, a quick plug, but all of the samples that I made in this video are available here on my Bandcamp, so uh, yeah, buy them. So if you haven't checked out his new album, Ultra Truth, check it out now. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe and subscribe.